What's up, YouTube? We're the Secret Stash Bros, and in this video, we're going to show you how to make a secret spinning dice set. You know what? Forget boring long intros. No one wants to sit through those anyways. The idea for this project came from a puzzle that we seen many years ago at a friend's house. It uses the principle of centripetal force to spin four different pistons back into their holes. It's kind of hard to see, but that's the basic drawing right there. If you don't understand quite how it works just yet, you will in a moment. But for right now, the first thing we had to do was cut our two sides. And these are a little bit trickier to make than you might expect. On the surface, it might just look like you have to cut two pieces of wood and put a notch in each of them. And while this might be true, you actually have to take the two pieces that you cut to size, or however big you want your little cubby system to be, and then rip them in half. Once you split them into two separate pieces, it's very important that you mark which side came from which piece. Because in a moment, we're going to have to glue these things back together. In this clip here, I apologize, I accidentally turned the recording off on my camera, so you won't actually get to see me cut the little notch out for your top pieces, but just cut along the X or the box that you've seen us drawing earlier, however which way you draw yours. For our sliding locks, all we did was take a quarter inch metal rod and cut it out into about one inch pieces so that we could fit them into our holes. Then we took them over to the grinding wheel and rounded off the ends. When you're installing these locks, it's really important to make sure that you choose the right size bit that will allow just enough room for your locks to slide, but not so much that they flop around. Also, we used a scratch awl to put little tiny holes in the spots where we were going to drill the holes with the drill press, just so that when we started the bit, it wouldn't go off to the side and we get it right in the center where we needed it. One small tip, make sure that you put your pistons in before you glue it all together. Otherwise, you're going to have to start all over. Okay, so these things are done drying. What we have to do right now is we have to drill some little holes down below so that these little pivot things, or whatever you want to call them, can slide right into there and lock these two pieces together. Now these holes have to be in the exact spot where the locks will slide into. If they're off, the pistons won't slide into the hole, or it'll be too sloppy and it'll be obvious there's a secret compartment in your build. Alright, so if we weren't putting any secret compartments in this thing, we would actually be done, because that's how the puzzle works. However, because we are putting secret compartments in this thing, we had to build the housings for our drawers. Cutting our pieces to size was actually the easy part. The hard part came when we had to attach them. Because the only way to attach our boxes to our X was from the inside, we had to drill pilot holes with very deep countersinks so that the screws wouldn't be rubbing on any of the boards. The easiest way that we found to construct these boxes was to actually interlock your X's so that you could see the whole project as a whole. For your last box though, you'll have to deconstruct it because the holes that you drill are overlapped by the other pieces that you just installed. A part of creating really good secret compartments is to not make them look obvious. So in this project, we chose to make our hidden spaces only about two inches deep. While Dad was working on a couple other aspects of the project that we'll get to in a moment, I went ahead and put on the dice designs that you saw on the project earlier. Because of our time constraints, I didn't get to do the playing card stamps until later in the build, so you'll see those in a little bit. So one of the things with this smaller puzzle is that because it's so small, you can spin it really, really fast. And that allows for these rods to come apart really easily. With our box, it's way too big. And me and Dad, we were spinning it as hard as we could, and sometimes the rods wouldn't go back into their holes and we couldn't get it apart. So what we realized is that we need more speed going in a circle, obviously. So what we're going to do to get that speed is we're going to attach this swivel. It's kind of like a giant uh, thing that would go on like a huge Lazy Susan in your house. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach it to this base. Well, not this one. There's a couple more down here, but we're going to glue that together. And our goal is that hopefully this spinner will give us enough speed to shoot the rods back into their holes where they belong, and it'll be much easier to get it to part and spin. For our base, we used some of the old barn wood that we used in our past two videos. Hopefully this time this will be the last of it, in case you guys are getting sick of seeing it. But we glued it together, chopped it here on the table saw, and then ran it through the planer so that it was nice and smooth and we could just attach the spinner really easily to it. One important thing to note is that when you're attaching your spinner to your dice set, you can only do it on the bottom piece because you need to be able to pull the top piece off. And then it was time for the toughest part of this entire project. The drawers. I would have Andy working on the boxes, but there's too many pieces for him to remember how they go back together. If you guys were here, yeah. you would see how many wrong cuts this guy has made. 
He's been working on like one or two drawers for like the past three hours, yesterday and today combined. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I told you not to do the drawers, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna do the drawers. Now, you're gonna be spending the next two or three hours on the same stinking drawers, because you've only got one done. Dan, always remember that you may be the builder, but I am the editor. While Dad was messing around with the drawers, I went ahead and attached a brass handle to the top piece so that we could spin it and lift it out more easily. Then we grabbed a couple more of our scrap barnwood pieces and outlined our drawers onto the backs of them so that we could attach the fronts. Each drawer was a completely different size, so we really had to take our time and get them squared up on there. I don't claim to be an artist. Just about everything you've seen me draw on this channel, I've pretty much copied from a picture. Eventually, maybe I'll reach the point where I can just draw stuff straight from my mind, but until then, you're going to have to settle for me uh, freelancing this stuff. To be quite honest with you, we weren't exactly sure how this thing was going to turn out. We had the concept and we knew how the thing was going to lock, but we weren't sure how it was going to turn out or what it was going to look like. One thing I will say is that this thing has to be spun really, really fast to get the pistons to retract. In that last clip there, we sped up the footage so you wouldn't have to wait for it to stop spinning. But that ball bearing spinner was absolutely essential. Without it, there would have been no way for us to get this thing spinning fast enough so that the rods would just go back into their holes. If you're gonna try this one yourself, one thing, two, actually two things we'd recommend is getting maybe some magnets for your drawer things. We didn't feel like doing them, or as Dad would say, I didn't feel like wasting my magnets. But you can put magnets on these drawers here to make them stay in, and if you get strong enough ones, they might, you could probably leave them in when you spin the, the entire die set. The other thing is you're also going to want to get one of these, which really helps with getting a lot of speed for spinning it, because the bigger the object, the faster you got to spin it to get the posts to move back. It, it relies on centrifugal force to unlock it. Centrifugal, centripetal, you guys decide in the comments, we know it's a big dispute. Thanks for watching guys, we yep. hope you'll join us next time. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and... Thanks. Thanks! Bye, bye.